in the town of Bethlehem. I remember the manger that held the great I am. And I'll not forget the angel that told me of his birth. He said, Mary, you will bring him to this earth. Janie? You're never going to believe it. Don't tell me. Farmer Brown's donkey got out again. No, it's not Farmer Brown's donkey. It's... Did old Mrs. Jensen lose her teeth again? No, Betty. This is big. Well, then, I'm glad Mrs. Jensen didn't lose her teeth. I'd rather not help her look for them this time, even though she did pay us for helping us the, her the last time. It's not that I don't want to help her, it's just... Betty, listen to me! Goodness, Janie, what is it? The king is coming to our town! A king is coming here? What king? Not just a king. The sign said, the king. Who is the king? I don't know, but there was a sign at the library, and it said that the king is coming. If we go now, I'll show you the sign. Who knows, maybe someone there will know more about it. Good idea, Janie. Let's go. See, buddy, there's the sign. It says, the king is coming tonight at 7, just like I told you. You're right, Jenny. It doesn't give us much information, though. Maybe we can find someone here who knows more about it. Hey, 
There's a girl sitting there reading a book. Maybe she knows more about the king. Let's go ask her. Excuse us, can you ask me, can I ask you a question? Oh, hi, I'm Cindy. What can I do for you? That sign over there says the king is coming. I mean, do you know more about that? I mean, who is the king? You mean you don't know who the king is? Have you never heard of King Edward V? Um, no. Nope. Never? Haven't you read any newspapers? Is King Edward the king? Is King Edward the fifth? And yes, he is the king. But how can you be so sure? Everyone knows that the king would have to be the richest person on earth. And King Edward the fifth is just that. Oh. I'm so glad that he will choose our small but wonderful city as a stopping point on his visit. Nah, the rich guy ain't some king. It's Bobby Sands. Who's he? Bobby Sands. You don't know who Bobby Sands is. Bobby Sands is the greatest baseball player on earth. He has over 2,873 hits and 714 home runs. He's a two-way player. He can pitch as well as play. If he ain't this king, then no one is. Excuse me, but I must disagree. And who are you? I'm Alexandria Hornsby, archaeologist. I think that the king is not King Edward III, as you say, or even this baseball player. Fifth. It's King Edward the Fifth. Okay, sure, the Fifth. I believe the king is, was, the great Aztec king, King Juan Amada Puda. His remains should be buried not far from this very building. Remains? You mean you think that the king is dead? Yes. According to history, he was beheaded and then was buried with the very same sword that was used to cut off his head. Cool. Janie! <laughs> Actually, I was looking for the person who posted the sign. I was hoping they would have more information about the dig. Dig? You're going to dig the dig? That'll be small. I'm coming. No, Janie, not. <laughs> cool it, Janie. Remember, we're supposed to be trying to figure out who the key is. This girl, Cindy, thinks that he's King Edward or something. Danny thinks that he's a famous baseball player. And this Miss Hornsby thinks that he's a bunch of old bones on the ground. Let's think a minute and see if we can figure this out. We heard you say you don't know who the king is, but we do, don't we, girls? Yeah? Uh-huh. We sure do. Really? Who is it? It's Eldon Preston. Eldon Preston? The movie star Eldon Preston? Yeah? Uh-huh. He sure is. He's so fab, isn't he? Why is Eldon Preston the king? Everyone knows that Eldon Preston is the king. I mean, he is the best movie star in all the world. Isn't that right, girls? Yeah? Uh-huh. He sure is. Oh, brother. I see. Come on, girls. We need to get ready if Alvin Preston's going to be here tonight. Yeah. Uh-huh. We sure do. Stop! Everyone stay where they are and nobody will get hurt. What's going on? Are you a robber? No, of course not. But we heard that the king was coming, and we're zookeepers. I'm Zelda, and she's Zoe. We're trained to work with the wildest of animals, especially lions. Lions? Lions? Wait a minute. You think that the king is a lion? That's right. But lions are dangerous, aren't they, girls? Yeah. Uh-huh. They sure are. So why would a lion be the king? That is a good question. I'm wondering that myself. Well, everyone knows that the king, that the lion is considered the king of the jungle. Uh... So we, when we heard that the king was coming, we knew you would need our expertise. Now everybody stay calm. We know exactly what to do. No, wait a minute. The king is King Edward V. No way. He's Bobby Sands. No, he's King Wanamata Puda. Oh no, he's Eldon Preston. Isn't that right, girls? Yeah. Uh-huh. He sure is. Be quiet. We all need to calm down. I guess we'll just have to wait until tonight to see for ourselves just who the king really is. Hey, Betty. No one's here. Surely he'll be here soon. I sure hope so. I can't wait to get some hitting tips. 
It did say seven, didn't it? I told you that to dig him up. Well, where could he even be? He could be waiting ready to pounce on us any minute. But we're afraid of our heads, aren't we, girls? Yeah. Uh-huh. We sure are. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you all here tonight. Oh, hi, preacher. We're here to see the king. Have you seen him yet? Is he coming? Actually, the king has already come. What? There was a sign at the library that said that the king was coming tonight. It said we'd get to see the king. I demand to see the king. Wait a minute. The sign never said that you'd get to see the king. Now I'm really confused. Did you put the sign up, preacher? Yes, I did. I can tell you all about the king. Why don't we all sit down while I explain? Everything we need to know about the king is written in here. In fact, this Bible was written by the king himself. Let me tell you the story. In the very beginning, there was nothing but God. He created the world and everything in it, including man. The world that God created was perfect until Adam and Eve sinned. Because of their sin, all mankind would be spiritually dead and cut off from fellowship with God. But God had a solution. Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God would send a savior, a king, to earth to redeem his people from their sins. For years prophets foretold that he would be coming. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And then one day, the time came for that wonderful king to be born. God sent one of his angels to give a very special message to a young woman named Mary. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, who shall call his name Jesus. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In a dark and dusty stable, she held her newborn son. Exhausted from the labor, 
relieved he'd finally come Could she have known all the joy he would bring She knew one day he would be king Her companion watched in silence With wonder on his face That a miracle could happen To a carpenter by trade She tried to soothe his crying with a tender lullaby for the moment they would keep him from the waiting world outside. Alleluia's were already echoing. Praise to the child who would be king. He would be And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And the word was made flesh and thrilled among us, and we beheld his glory. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. In the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, good will toward men. shepherds. I'm sure they were scared. I know that we would have been. Wouldn't we, girls? Yeah. Uh-huh. We sure would. Shh. Go on, preacher. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. This baby was the king. What happened to him? He grew and became a man. And then what he did was far greater than what any earthly king could ever do. God sent his son to God sent his son to earth to die for the sins of the whole world. He paid the penalty for all men's sin when he died on the cross. Well, that's why the Bible says in Romans 8 Romans well, 5 8 says, but he commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ's coming wouldn't mean much without his death. 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. First Timothy 1.15 I'm so glad that he loves us so much that he was willing to die for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The good news is that he didn't stay dead. He arose on the third day, and now he lives forever at the right hand of the Father. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was sent before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. One day he'll come to earth again, not to redeem and save us, but to take all of those who have him as their savior back home with him. In John 14, 3, it says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's what you meant by the Tina's coming. When is he coming again? Nobody knows exactly when, but we must be ready when he comes. The Bible says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. How do we make sure we're ready this time? Well, in the ancient world, the king would send messengers ahead of him to announce, the king is coming, the king is coming. This gave people time to prepare gifts, spruce up the city, and get ready for royalty. They would often make a highway for the king's arrival, smoothing rough places and removing obstacles. That's what we need to do. But instead of preparing gifts and roads, we need to, prepare, we need to get our hearts right with God, because he is coming. I want to make sure that I'm ready. So do we, don't we, girls? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Yeah? Uh-huh. I sure do. 